you know, starting to get back to, you know, regular um, day-to-day routines. I mean, it's big for them, um, you know, so I'm just happy for them and just, um, you know, just really uh, proud of their success, uh, you know, how well they're coming in and, you know, falling into things uh, without having any hiccups or, you know, any setbacks because I didn't know that, you know, both of their situations were different. But um, at the end of the day, they missed a lot of time, you know, so. Uh, for sure. Um, but I know, I've known uh, TB before. I'm um, even coming here just because me and him use the same trainer. Um, and Rico Hines, uh, you know, who's a great player, development coach for the Kings. Um, you know, but uh, Rico's been around this guy, uh, been around this game for a numerous amount of years, man, and knows it in and out. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of different variants of, you know, how plays are being ran nowadays, but they all kind of similar and kind of, you know, fall back into the same aspect of, you know, pick and roll and, you know, being able to make decisions in the pocket and, uh, you know, just find what you do well. Um, and Rico is one of the best at, you know, refining God's game and, you know, just basically harping and hitting on the things that you're going to need and the different uh, situation aspects you're being put in in your own um, day-to-day uh, situation in your organization. So, um, I've known TB before coming in here um, and just, you know, being around him and just seeing um, his growth um, from him working, getting back to, you know, where he is now um, is, is big, like I said, because I've seen him go through the process uh, with Rico. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I literally, um, you know, off days, the majority of the time I drive back home and I just check on my family and, um, you know, the different businesses that I have back home um, in general. Uh, so, you know, this is the first time I've ever been on the East Coast and definitely the first time I've ever been this close to my family. So um, it's been a blessing this year. You know, they've been able to come up to a lot of games, a lot more than they've been able to uh, with me playing on the West Coast. So it's been a blessing. Yeah, you my question. How often are you able to drive back four times? Uh-huh, man, um, you know, with this crazy weather that's coming up, uh, I got to – you know, pick and choose when I'm going to be able to. But honestly, um, you know, any off time I can get, any off day that we have um, when we're completely off, you know, I, I make the drive down and, you know, just basically go back and see my dad, um, you know, my mom, my family. Um, you know, my manager's still there. Um, like I said, I have businesses that's there. Um, one is in the process of opening up, and then I also have one that's open as well in my daycare. So just to go back and see those things um, open up and running, actually fully, um, you know, transpiring from, you know, where my vision was for it to where it is now, it's a blessing. In the daycare, what are your deals? Um, I'm done a little bit, uh, getting into um, real estate a little bit. I have uh, Airbnbs, um, have one in South Carolina, and actually uh, looking to do another one in a few different states. Um, and I actually have a sneaker store that I'm opening um, in my hometown, uh, downtown. So um, it's a lot of different, you know, inspiring and, and you know, things that I want to tap into um, that's not only going to be for me, but for my kids, you know, for my family, for later on down the road. Um, you know, that's what it's about for me. You know, I know I can't play this game forever, um, but while I'm here, you know, I want to take full advantage of the things that I have around me now to, you know, set me up later on in life. Um. Yeah, because, um, I mean, it just goes to show um, in our play. You know, we'll go on and win two, three games. Um, then we'll turn around and, you know, have a loss. Um, we'll go on and win one, two games, turn around and have a loss, you know. So, as you see, it's inconsistent. And, um, you know, I think the guys sit around the head when they say um, consistency um, is what we got to bring, but it's got to be as a collective group um, from top to bottom. Um, so, you know, we really got to understand, you know, every game is different. Um Every night we go out, you know, what may have worked the game before may not work the next game. So at the same time, we got to understand that everything is a process that we're doing, you know. Um, but definitely consistency is something that we really going to have to, um, you know, really fine tune and really find it here soon because, you know, we can't really just keep having these, you know, up and down ways because we're going to find ourselves in a tough situation towards the end of the year. That's going to be different because at the same time, like you just said, we're not fully, um, you know, to our full team. We're missing the 
50 party percent of our fees that's sitting at home right now for him, an inconsistent test, you know. So, and the point about it, he went and got vaxxed. I mean, so what, what do y'all want this guy to do, man? Um, he's following all the protocols. He, you know, was real big on not being vaxxed and getting vaxxed, you know, and he went and got vaxxed and he didn't get a positive test. He had an inclusive test and you know, he, he had this guy sitting home again in COVID protocols. So what, what do y'all want him to do? Um, so it, it's not going to be easy because at the same time, uh, he's out now, you know, who, who's to say, you know, somebody else don't power enough positive tests. So it, it's never going to really be a chance to the point where I think we're going to, you know, always be to a full, full capacity team. I don't think that, I don't think it's going to be anybody in the NBA, you know, hopefully it gets to that point, you know, but it's just the way this virus is going, the way things are happening, you know, nobody knows how it spreads and how it is to, you know, basically really, Tame it, you know, or to the point make it where it's not um, a existent factor. Um, I mean, yeah, you could play with, I mean, you could, yeah, you could play with a lot of energy and, you know, the effort and, you know, having the, you know, trying the, the will and, and the want to win the game, but at the same time, um, it's still going to be tough, man, because at the same time, you may have guys that are there on the 10 day. You may have guys you have to pick up out of free agency. It's, it's, it's a lot of different variants that come in, into the factor of, you know, what's the overall big picture. Um, so, you know, at the same time, I, I think it's just going to be difficult for everybody, like I said, because right now we're living in a time where, you know, it, this isn't the norm for anybody. You know, everybody's still trying to learn and figure it out and trying to, you know, figure out what is the best plan or the best um way to go about doing things and i don't think nobody has that answer you know i think we're all just trying to win it and trying to figure it out um together um yeah we did it to the point where we made it work we went in the bubble but you know guys really aren't going to do that again man because at the same time that was tough for you know not only us being in it but all the people that had to work it you know people that was away from their home and you know they couldn't bring a you know significant other into the bubble and things like that so it, it's tough you know so it's something that we're all just going to have to to learn and, you know, deal with and manage throughout the time that, you know, we're going through it, really. Is there a sense on the team where you're trying to rally around those guys who have the time in protocol? Like, you know, Brad, kind of like... Um, honestly, man, that's that's not um, a realistic thing, honestly. Um, definitely, you miss their presence. Definitely, you miss them being in the locker room and, you know, everything that they bring towards our team. But as far as, like, rallying or, or winning for those guys, man, that's that's not really realistic because we're always going to have – well, it sucks to say, but probably always going to have somebody in that, that COVID protocol thing, man, because like I said, we don't know how this virus is spreading, man, and it sucks, you know. Uh, so I don't really think it's to a point of, of trying to rally or win for those guys. I mean, I think it's really just we're trying to go out and, you know, play the game the right way and execute the things the way that they want them ran, even if they was in the locker room. Um you know, in person, really. Um, I don't really know if it's more so about, you know, trying to win for them because at the same time, we're all ultimately, you know, built in and tied into one goal and that's in winning overall, so. Um... Um, I mean, it's going to take a lot, honestly, man. Uh, yeah, it's easy to start out the beginning of the season uh, to the point of where we were because, you know, nobody really knew the identity that we were going to have. You know, we really didn't know that, you know. But after, you know, you play a numerous amount of games and, you know, to the point where we're at now, 40-plus in, you know, it's going to take a lot of adjustments. It's going to take, you know, a lot of, um, you know, different um, – critiquing areas of, you know, where we need to get better at, what we need to work on and, and how we need to build to get to that ultimate goal of where we was at the beginning of the year. Um, like I said, at the beginning of the year, it, it's definitely, you know, not really easier, but it is because at the beginning of the year, everybody's starting out fresh. You know, nobody kind of knows, you know, what anybody's true identity is really going to be, you know, especially in those early amount of games. Um, but now, like I said, we're in the point where we're 40 plus games in, you know, guys have film. Um, we've seen multiple teams uh, multiple times, man. So, like I said, everything's going to be an adjustment. We're going to have to learn how to, you know, 
going with a game plan, um, you know, have one thing that we try to do to, you know, execute to win the game. But at the same time, when that doesn't work, we're going to have to learn how to make adjustments on the fly, you know, being able to fix those things and, and being able to, you know, change and, and try to, you know, make something happen in that moment and not just go out, um, you know, thinking that that set game plan is always going to be what works because um, that's, that's not really uh, – you know, believable. It's, it's basketball, man. You never really can predict, you know, everything that's going to happen on the floor. All right, Trez, we'll take one question from Zoom. We'll take it from Neil. Hey, Trez, what is kind of the toughest part of a three center rotation and just trying to get adjusted to that? I don't know, brother. Um, I don't really have the answer for it. Um, only thing I can really do is just um, come in and, you know, look in to get my work and, um, you know, try to approach the game um, prepared and ready to play. Um, well, my name is Carl, honestly. Um, I was in that position last year. Uh, it didn't really work out well for me, but it definitely taught me on how to be a pro and how to basically just stay ready and stay prepared um, mentally and physically for this game. So, um, honestly, I don't really have the answer for that. Um, it's really not for, you know, up for me to try to figure out. It's for our coaching staff and I'll leave that in their hands. But like I said, it's just about me coming in and making sure that, you know, I'm prepared every, you know, every night, every, you know, time my name is called is more so what I get out of it, really. Uh, Brad is still in protocol. As you guys know, plus the league, it changes day to day, hour by hour. But uh, Brad is not with us. And uh, Davis uh, went through some light stuff today. He's actually doing some stuff on the court now, you know, to see how he feels and, um, you know, we'll, we'll see where he's at tomorrow. Did you uh, start to, as a sense of the coaching staff, start to piece together the rotation? Uh, Thomas Bryant, Louis Hunter, what's the process like trying to figure out who those guys are supposed to be? Yeah, it's just part of it, you know. Somebody's just going to have to be, put them into the fire and see what works, you know, since they're, you know, joining us as, uh, later in the season. And uh, as we move forward and we get a bigger uh, package of data to look at to see, you know, who they fit well with, who fits well with them, what two, three, four man lineups uh, work type of thing will, you know, adjust accordingly. But I think it's still too early for both of them as they're ramping up their minutes and stuff. And also as we try to figure out some things without Brad, you know, honestly, um, to just see how it kind of all fits uh, as we move forward. The last, uh, last night, it seemed like Denny was getting the two. Do you think that there was a lot of hype on the floor? Is that a product of more of a product of Brad being out or more a product of like uh, Russ Gaming? Yeah, I think it's honestly uh, more of the NBA now in terms of positionless versatility, you know, sort of thing. We got a lot of trust in our guys of playing multiple positions offensively and defensively. I think you could look across the league and look at some lineups and be like, who, who is the two, who is the three? I think those days are kind of, you know, more behind us, you know, sort of thing. And I think it's a credit to our guys and um, what we have here in terms of, you know, size, length, guys playing multiple positions and, it's not always going to be perfect, but uh, the guys have committed to it and bought in. And uh, as we work through it, uh, you know, sort of thing, I think we'll see uh, more and more good things happen. Yeah, even good question. I think a lot of it has to just do with the commitment part of it that we talked a little bit about last night, you know, sort of thing. It's a ever-changing league, and we talked about it a little bit this morning. You have to adapt, you know, with the situation. And I think our guys have actually been pretty good about it, all things considered, you know, sort of thing. But uh, night to night, who's in, who's injured, foul trouble, all that stuff. You know, we saw a guy like Aaron Holiday last night provide a spark for us. It's part of being a pro, just staying ready. You don't know. Um, you know, when your number is going to be called or why it's going to be called, um, whether you're in the rotation or out of it sort of thing. So um, our guys know uh, we have a very confident group um, about uh, what we're capable of doing, um, but it also doesn't mean we get to win, you know, sort of thing. And uh, it's part of it. Uh, it gives us a chance. But, but some of the things we touched on last night, some of the things we hopefully cleaned up today um, on both sides of the basketball, you know, uh, to get a more consistent effort, concentration, to not give possessions away. They, they all matter, you know, up 10, down 10, um, you know, it, it all values the same, whether it's the first quarter, you know, everybody talked about DeMar's shot here, 
couple of weeks ago, you know, and it's always magnified in those moments, you know, one, one amazing shot, one amazing play player, that sort of thing. But what put, what put us in that situation? You know, it could be all those things tied together, whether it was something in the second quarter when we didn't get back in transition, whether we were unorganized in offensive possession. So they all, they're all valued the same, how they're looked upon. They always get viewed upon, you know, down the stretch in terms of those close game moments. But those are the things we're trying to do a lot more consistently. Yep, you know, yep, everybody else was involved. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of it starts with doing your work early. You know, a lot of the Joel, Nurk, there's numerous guys across the league um, that their physicality is what it is. You're not going to be able to slow that part of it down. They're going to bring it to you. So, you know, I think for a guy like Gaff, his strength is his quickness. You know, uh, that'll be part of his growth of getting off of guys' bodies like that and using his quickness as his advantage. And then once they do catch the ball, it's not just like it is on the perimeter for our guards or anybody else. It's not one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, sort of thing. We need to have a shrink mentality, a multiple effort mentality. And when things aren't perfect, a cover mentality uh, sort of thing. And, and we, we've seen it at bits and pieces. We saw it much more consistently early in the year. And that's stuff we're, you know, constantly harping on and trying to just uh, be better at to give ourselves a chance each night. I saw you uh, pulling early aside after practice there. Um, if you're willing to share what you discussed, or if not, maybe what you guys discussed. And just... Yeah, not necessarily what we discussed, but just more, you know, um, whether when Wes is here or not, I think our whole staff is just, Touching the guys, communicating with them, seeing where they're at, good, bad, ugly, indifferent. Um, you know, you know what's going on not only here, off the court, and you know, just touching base. And it was, you know, I'm sure you saw me with him, but multiple guys yesterday and today. Just uh, you know, you can't talk to all 15 individually every day, but just to see where they're at, um, sort of thing. Make sure we're connected, we're on the same page, and um, just trying to help. That's all it is. How do you think he's picking up the defense? He's a plus six and I think a plus one. Yeah, I think he's doing a lot of good things. Uh, he had a, you know, a great possession one-on-one -on -one with Simons. I don't remember down in front of our bench where he really, and, um, you know, one of the things I did share with him, I, I think he's got an ability to be an elite level defender, not just with bigger guys, smaller guys like Simons, <clears throat> excuse me, that are uh, quicker um, sort of thing. And as he's around more and we're doing more and more stuff, and uh, I think it's only going to help him. But I think he's done a lot of good things. Uh, his energy, his physicality that he just naturally plays with uh, is a plus for our team. And uh, again, we're excited to have him here with us. I think yesterday he played from like the middle of the first quarter into the second, and rather than like four minutes, I think, but it's almost like eight minutes. Is that kind of the next step that you think that might happen? Yeah, some of it's starting into, you know, as we ramp up uh, the minutes, you know, from the performance team, change and stuff like that, you get him to play longer stretches, uh, to push through some of the conditioning part of it. Uh, part of it was, you know, without Davis playing, you know, it changed the rotation a little bit in terms of what, we're, what we were trying to look at. but. Um, he's a really good player. Um, he's going to do a lot of good things here for this organization. And, um, you know, uh, I got to do a better job helping him um, in those type of situations where, you know, putting him in position to be successful on offense. And uh, we're trying to figure it out as a group as we move forward here. Oh, boy. Um, a lot, you know, their physicality. Obviously, Joel, you know, we've talked about this morning, but he's got eight straight 30-point games right now. Um, you know, his presence is known on both ends of the floor, you know, sort of thing. And I think for us, um, it will start, it's always going to start with our defense. Our defense needs to fuel our offense. And at times we get away from that. Um, but just the level of physicality, the shot making, uh, and then the game kind of got obviously got away from us there uh, at a stretch. But they're playing at a high level right now. I know they had lost at home to Charlotte and they just went back to back wins. So, you know, uh, I guess two really good teams. So we're going we're gonna to need to bring it. And these games are different, you know. <clears throat> excuse me, a two o'clock start, guys are out of the routine, you know, it's a weekday, all that stuff comes into play. So um, we had a good day today, film coverage, talked about things we need to do better and uh, started to lock in on Philly sort of thing. So hopefully we'll see more carry over tomorrow. One, one thing I don't want to do uh, is put limits on any of our players know sort of thing and I think time will tell you know um as he works his way back and um you know watch him more and more up close but 
I think the disposition that he has defensively, uh, he has shown uh, in moments already. So it would be it would be exciting to watch his growth at, 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 on that side of the ball. All right, Coach, let's transition over to Zoom, and we'll start with Neil. Hey, Coach, what is the direction from the medical team right now on Rui and TB's uh, minutes restrictions right now? Yeah, it's just constant communication. That's the biggest thing is we have talks uh, every day, practice days, game days, where they're at on, on all that stuff. So um, that's the biggest thing. There's no – they have a plan. They're in contact with those guys. They relay it to myself or Wes uh, when he's here, and we connect uh, with Tommy as well. And uh, the plan is what it is, and when they communicate it, we'll push forward. And those guys are – they're tied into it as well. So they're aware of it, and uh, we'll take it one day at a time. And if you're willing to share, what was kind of the communication that Wes had with you either after the game yesterday or maybe today? Oh, yeah, I talked to Wes uh, at length last night. Obviously, uh, confidence and support and all that stuff. We just kind of talked about the game, and he obviously watched it closely. And I know I said to you guys after the game, he said the same thing, like wanted to get to the film, uh, as did I, and kind of see if it tied into what we saw, uh, you know, in live live play um, sort of thing. But uh he knows what this group's about. He's in close contact, even though he's not here. And he knows what we're capable of uh, in being better and more consistent. And uh, that was kind of his message is just keep keep doing the things we've talked about um, and keep hammering them with it. And, you know, uh, again, uh, we, we feel good. We're a very confident group. Uh, while it's disappointing to lose, um, you know, we look forward to the response uh, that we'll have tomorrow afternoon. And earlier in the season, you guys didn't have a ton of practice time. Brad, Spencer, other people say, you know, you guys are kind of learning things on the fly. How instrumental and helpful has it been for you guys to, during this homestand, have a lot more practice? Yeah, it's, it's been good, obviously, to go through, uh, whether it's practices, film sessions, walkthroughs on the road. Um, I think I talked about it uh, a little bit last night. It, it all matters. However we do it, uh, whether it's a halftime film edit, through a walkthrough type of session, and our, our guys are good about locking in, concentrating on what we're emphasizing on both sides of the ball. And again, we just, we need more carryover, more consistently um, from everybody. And that includes the coaching staff. We're all involved in it. We're not absolving ourselves of any of it. So, um, you know, as I said, we, we look forward to the challenges that lie ahead. I think we got five more games on this homestand and the, the road doesn't get any easier. And winning the league is hard. We understand that. And uh, we'll win when we, when we deserve to win. Thanks, Coach. All right, Coach, we'll take our last questions from Christos. Hello, coach. Hope you're doing well. Uh, from coaching, thank you very much. From coaching perspective, what is the most impressive part on Kyle Kuzma's growth uh, on both ends, especially on, uh, his, on the level of his maturity on the floor? Yeah, I think it's his all-around game. I think you know uh, everybody's talking about it, noticing it, you know, sort of things. Um, we're very aware of it, um, and it's just you know staying in the components of what we're doing you know, sort of thing on both ends of the floor. But his versatility of guarding multiple positions, putting the ball on the floor, making the right plays uh, when help is there, uh, knocking down open shots, making big shots for us, uh, timely shots for us throughout the season. Uh, I think it just kind of shows what type of player he is and the growth that he's had over his career. Uh, I think he's getting a chance to showcase it uh, here night in and night out. And also in the last games, you haven't uh, on the floor Bradley Will, but uh, Spencer Dinwiddie made a huge step up, lead on the floor, make plays for himself, make made plays for his teammates. How encouraging signs are that from your perspective? Uh, I'm sorry, I missed the last part. So... How encouraging signs for you is uh, all those things to see Spencer lead on the floor? Yeah, Spencer's, uh, you know, I think he averaged like, what, 19, 20 a game one year. You don't do that in this league. Uh, by accident. You know, he, he's a really good player. Uh, I know that those guys have talked about it. We've talked about it is playing with different groups, playing uh, with Brad, playing without Brad, you know, sort of thing and finding their ways and, you know, when to defer, when to be aggressive sort of thing. And uh, I think he's, he's, he's in a good place right now. Uh, he's playing really good basketball, um, you know, sort of thing. And I think he's adjusted um, to what we're asking him to do. And, uh, you know, he's shown it time and time again. He's gotten better as the season's gone along. Uh, he's into the team. He wants to win, uh, and those type of things you don't coach. You know, they're just that's who he is, and that's uh, that's what we're excited to have. Well, we, we don't understand what it's like to play in an NBA game, let alone come in cold after missing the two or three times playing for three quarters. How tough is it to come in and microwave it up, like you said last night? Uh, I mean, I just try to play my game. 
can't worry about how tough it is. You just got to go out there and do it. So uh, that's my job. I'm supposed to be out there hooping and playing as hard as I can. So that's what I try to do every game. You like right now, just with so many more players available back to protocol, Rui and Thomas coming back, just uh, being part of a very deep team. Um, we're very deep, obviously. Um, the guys you said that just came back, they're going to help us out a lot this year. Um, they're probably going to be our main guys going forward, uh, obviously with the starters and everything. But yeah, it's awesome. Uh, in the playoffs, when we get to the playoffs, or sorry, when we get to the playoffs, we're going to be very deep. So whether we have injuries or just guys that have bumps and bruises and stuff like that, we'll be able to pretty much keep that pace going with the guys coming in from out of the rotation. Say it again. Um, they're kind of similar. Um, Pat does a lot of talking uh, more than Wes does, but he does that anyway, so it's normal. Um, it was crazy seeing Pat drop the plays yesterday, but he did a really good job at it. Uh, he Obviously, you have the other four coaches out there that are up front with them, and that really helped him out, but Pat did a great job yesterday, for sure. Um, I think we have more guys back, so that's good. I think we were just going into like the health and safety protocol with everybody uh, during the Philly game, but yeah, we should be locked and loaded. Uh, we have everybody back. We pretty much have almost a full roster without Brad, so we should pretty much get out there and compete. What stands out to you about both Rui and Thomas Bryant coming out with their back and starting to play them? Um, I mean, I've always obviously played them before in previous years, but they're great players, great teammates, great guys to be around. We're excited when we first got Rui back out here. Um, he's just a good guy to be around and TB has a lot of energy with him. So those two guys are really gonna help us out there for sure. Uh, what do you do uh, to keep taking your mind off basketball when you're um, Just hang out with my family. Uh, I got two kids at home, my wife. So my dad's out here too right now, but just hang out with my family. Um, I've been here before, uh, my fourth year in NBA. So I've been to not playing the whole year to playing limited minutes to coming out the rotation. So honestly, just keeping my faith in God and knowing that he has the plan and my family is a great base. Uh, they support me a lot and there are people I can lean on for times like this, but for me, I just got to wait my turn. That's pretty much all they'll tell you in the NBA. <clears throat> wait your turn, and soon you get your opportunity. You just got to be ready for it. All right, Aaron, we'll transition over to Zoom, and we'll start with questions from Neil. Hey, Aaron, when you're sitting on the bench for the first three quarters of yesterday's game, is there anything where you're kind of like, oh, this is something that I might be able to attack, and then – if so, is that something that you were able to implement in the fourth quarter? Um, not really. I was just out there trying to support my team, honestly. Um, we got down probably by as big as like 16 at one point, but just try to support them, give them confidence uh, as they're playing. And obviously when my name was called, I was just trying to be ready. Thanks, Aaron. We'll go to Christos. Hey, Aaron, hope you're doing well. Uh, Aaron, if you played five minutes or if you play 15, 25 minutes, how important for you to stay even kill and be productive and effective on both ends? What is the secret behind that? Uh, there's no secret. I just try to play out for my team, man. I just try to do everything I can to help them win and put us in the best position uh, to get the W. So whether I play five minutes, 25 minutes, I got to play hard on both ends, uh, really bring the intensity on the defensive end and try to push the pace on the offensive end. Uh, I feel like we're at our best when we're out and running, getting easy baskets and having me pick up the ball full court uh, and just picking up the energy on defense. I think that helps us a lot. And also how the chemistry inside the, in the team, how how beneficial, how, how help you to bring that uh, intensity on both ends? Just going through practice. Uh, we've been here since September. A lot of us were here in September. So just going through practice, obviously the schemes coaches have and the ways that they have us uh, do like three-man drills and stuff like that to, to get to connected out there on the court. Um, 
it really helps. And we got a great group of guys, great characters. So guys aren't selfish on the court. So that makes it easier as well.